Hi everyone, it's Lauren. A happy new year to you. I hope you've started 2018 well. This is my favourite time of year to be on booktube and to watch booktube because everybody is uploading their favourite books that they read in 2017. And I love watching those videos and I also love making them myself because I love reviewing what I read, looking back on all the fantastic things I've read and being able to recommend them again to you. So I have 10 books in this video. Um, just by accident, it's not necessarily a top 10 and I'm not going to to do them in any kind of countdown or order, any particular order. It's just gonna be random, just hit you with them, surprise you. So the first book that I'm going to show to you is actually the last book that I finished and that is Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. I read this because it was shortlisted as part of the Costa Novel Awards. Um, it got to the top four, it didn't win, but this was my favourite book on the shortlist. This book is a modern day retelling of the Greek tragedy Antigone, and it is about a family of British Muslims. So our main characters in here are Isma and her younger sister Anika and Anika's twin brother Parvez. All three of them are living under the shadow of their father, having been a suspected terrorist um, in the Middle East, and he had died on his way to Guantanamo Bay. And at the opening of this book, Parvez has recently left the UK to join ISIS in Syria. Um, so it covers a whole range of topics, um, mostly about kind of being British and being Muslim and kind of how you should portray your identity and your culture and kind of what it means to be of a different culture in Britain at this time. It also looks at what would drive someone to join a terrorist organisation such as ISIS. But although that is a main part of the plot, it doesn't just focus on that. It also looks at Britishness in terms of the class system. Um, and on top of all those really interesting topics that it examines, it's such an enjoyable book and I really love the writing style. I got completely swept up with the characters um, and really invested in it, so I would really highly recommend this, whether you're interested in the topics, whether you're interested in Antigone, or whether you just want a really enjoyable read. Keeping to the theme of literary prizes, there are two more books on this list which were shortlisted for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction back in the spring. They featured on my Top Reads of 2017 So Far video, and they're here again in my Top Reads of 2017 at the end. I absolutely loved these two books. The first of them is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien. This is about a young girl, Marie, who is Canadian-Chinese, and one day her mother and her take in another young girl called Ai Ming who is Chinese and fleeing the Tiananmen Square um, massacre which has happened in China and through this meeting Marie and Ai Ming um, talk about their family histories and Marie learns about her father and Ai Ming's father's relationship and through this family history we see a viewpoint of the Chinese communist revolution or the kind of the, the after effects of that and there is so much in this book I found it so beautiful it talks about beauty beauty of language beauty of music um, and numbers and patterns but then also about families and a person's presence in their children's lives and the kind of the after effects of that throughout the generations. This is an absolute triumph of a book. She has so much in here, it's so accomplished and she covers so many different topics so well. Um, but on top of that, it's also an enjoyable read. As I said before, um, enjoyability in reading something is very important to me. You get a lot of books which are shortlisted for literary prizes or win literary prizes and it's more about the accomplishment of the book in my opinion, than whether it's enjoyable to actually read it. And all of these books I'm recommending to you today, I absolutely loved the actual experience of reading as well as being impressed by the structure of the book themselves. So the second one on the shortlist, which I do not have a copy of because I think it's still with my mum, I think I've lent it to her, is Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. This book is about a couple in Nigeria who are unable to have a child um, and so the husband's family encourage him to take a second wife. And that's all I really want to say about this book because it takes you in so many interesting different places and the plot twists and turns in ways that you wouldn't have expected. It's so wonderfully written and weaves in themes of family and motherhood and culture and storytelling um, and I absolutely loved it. If you'd like to hear a little bit more about the Women's Prize shortlist from this year, um, I did a video with Jane Campbell where we discussed all six books um, in quite a lot of detail. So if you'd like to hear a bit more about that, I'll link that there and in the description box below. It really was an amazing shortlist. I thought all six books were fantastic. Um, these two were my favourites but I would recommend you watch that if you haven't already. And what a segue that was because my next book on this list is by Jen Campbell and that is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. This is a collection of short stories and I'm always amazed at how many different ideas and topics Jen manages to cram into such short stories. Um, Things that she covers in here, for example, include um, ghosts, death, the afterlife, um, 
body image of women growing up in adolescence and love and fairy tales there's a strong theme of fairy tales throughout all of the stories are quite different in their style and kind of what they're talking about but it does really feel like a coherent collection and just so imaginative and original next we have mend the living by Meili de Kurangal, which i think is called the heart um, in the us this is an absolutely beautiful book which i read on holiday it's about a heart essentially it's a heart transplant but what we get is the journey between the boy who owns the heart um, Simon him being in an accident and then the whole journey that this heart goes on from him the different people it touches up until the point of the recipient of the heart when I first heard about this book I almost thought this would be a book from the heart's perspective or something because I thought oh it, it would be a journey from person to person but it is a little bit more than that and we get perspectives from lots of different people from Simon himself Simon's mother and the doctor and the nurses which are working on Simon, the person who is facilitating the transplant, the doctors that perform it, and then finally the woman who's going to receive the heart. But they all kind of jump in and out and it has this beautiful feeling like you're getting on with this character for a portion of their journey and then you're kind of jumping off and allowing them to continue with their story and then going along with somebody else but you still feel like you understood that character fully and it's such a beautiful pondering on life and what life is and about death and how that is part of our everyday lives. On a similar theme, a similar medical theme, is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. And this book is a memoir. Paul Kalanithi was a brain surgeon who realized that he was suffering from terminal lung cancer. And this book is part autobiography of his life leading up to that point, and then part rumination on medicine and philosophy and life, and kind of as his own life is coming to a close. What's really great about this book is that Paul Kalanithi can write so well. He actually w wanted to write his whole life and um, studied English at university. So the book itself reads beautifully. It's so interesting and heartbreaking to hear his perspective um, as his life draws to a close and also his thoughts on life in general and kind of what he wanted to do. I avoided this book for some time because I thought it might be a little bit of a morbid read and I only actually picked it up because it was a pick for a book club that I'm part of. But I'm really glad that I did read it and if you're feeling a little bit like do I want to read someone's memoir when they knew they were dying um, I would still recommend it because it's quite uplifting and joyful about life um, at the same time. I seem to be putting these books into pairs so continuing down that theme I have another two books both on gender. This year I did want to read a lot more books on feminism and gender studies and I did read a few not as many as I wanted to and some of them maybe not as successfully as these two but the ones I have in my hand right now are absolute fantastic reads. The first one is The Descent of Man by Grayson Perry. I really enjoyed this because having read a lot of books on feminism from a woman's perspective and being a woman myself, um, it was really refreshing to hear from a man's perspective and what it's like to grow up with the pressures of masculinity as they are in current society. Um, it's a very short book. This was a companion, I think, or at least inspired from a programme that Grayson Perry was doing for the television. And so there's lots of different perspectives in here and different people that he was interviewing at the time. And it's really arguing that we need a new definition of what masculinity is, um, because there is really no place for that old-fashioned caveman masculinity in modern day society but because boys are encouraged into a certain mold when they're growing up then they have all these masculine attributes which there really is no place for and no outlet for um so very very interesting very short read i'd recommend this to everyone. It's been on my boyfriend's nightstand for a long while because I want him to read it. <laughs> and the other book on gender, which I absolutely loved, I don't think this will come as a surprise to anyone, was The Gender Games by Juno Dawson. Juno is a transgender woman and it does what it says on the tin, this book, and it says the problem with men and women from someone who has been both. And I really loved this book because Juno's voice is so I was going to say authentic, of course her voice is authentic, but it's just so friendly and companionable and when you're reading along it's it's colloquial but still reads so well and she gets all of her points and her arguments across in a way that is so easy for anyone to understand even if you've never really read about gender before. And what this book does really well, which really impressed me, is that it's part autobiography and part a social study really and she talks to lots of different people um, in her life and gets different opinions but the balance works so well in this book and it doesn't feel too much one or the other so you're getting her own perspective but she's very clear when it is her own perspective and then we're talking about general things in the world as well so a very interesting, very helpful, very useful book and a great one to start with actually I think if you're new to gender studies. I think both of these would be fantastic for 
for beginners in reading around this topic. Very quickly, another book that featured in my top books of 2017 so far back in June, and I read this right at the beginning of last year, and that is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. This book, I've said it before, but this book, I, I didn't like it as soon as I started reading it. It took me a while to warm up to it, but as I read it, I got so involved and my enjoyment of the book was almost exponential. Like by the end, I was just like, I never want this book to end. Um, this is a historical fiction novel. It's about a woman called Cora who used to live in London with her son. When her husband dies, she moves out to Essex and meets a vicar there and all of the people locally are talking about this Essex serpent which is a old monster which has been seen and perhaps it's back in the marshes. This is at a time in history when people were interested in fossils, Mary Anning was digging up pleosaurs on the beaches and Cora is very much of that mould, she's a woman who's interested in science and fact and she's trying to work out what's going on. This book has massive crimson petal and the white vibes if you have read that. Um, it's sort of historical book where all of the characters are so fully formed and fully flourished and yet it doesn't feel anachronistic. And finally a book that I am so pleased to have read this year and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is not a new book and it's a book that lots of people have loved for a long time but finally I got to it while I was on holiday and I'm so pleased that I did. This is about a young boy who joins university and while he's at university he kind of falls into this group of ancient Greek students who are all very well off, all very eccentric, and what we know at the beginning of the book is that one of this group is going to be killed by the rest of them, and we don't know why and we don't know how, and the whole of the book then is unfolding kind of the build up to this death and then the aftermath of it and it unfolds so slowly and so beautifully and I completely loved her writing. It's a very long book and it's the kind of thing where nothing much happens, although Obviously, a murder happens, so it's a big thing, but day to day, not much seems to be going on, but behind the scenes, there is a lot there. It's the kind of writing which I think it is deceptively easy and deceptively simple. You don't realise how clever it is while you're reading it. Um, and it just really stayed with me. I felt like so a part of all of those characters. And it's not often that I want to go back and reread a book, especially a book that's that long, I've got to say. But The Secret History is definitely up there. At some point in my life, I would love to reread it. So that is my top 10. I am so in the zone for hearing about fantastic books at the moment. So please tell me what your favourite books of 2017 were. I've been watching everyone's videos. My Watch Later playlist is like 50 videos long, all of best books of 2017. So I'll get to them eventually and then buy loads, I presume, <laughs> and have more to read next year. I would also love to hear your opinions if you've read any of these books and I will see you in my next video. Bye.